Welcome to The Real Build. I'm your host, Bill Ryman, your broker builder. And today I have some guests coming from all the way across the country from me, San Luis Obispo, California. They have over, over the last 10 years, they have served over 800 clients online and in person. They started remodeling and managing rental units after college and it accumulated into remodeling homes and creating income producing properties. A transition point in their home improvement business was in 2015, they purchased the worst home in their favorite neighborhood, which I just said, San Luis Obispo. They converted the garage into a luxury guest unit. That guest unit was turned into a vacation rental that funded the complete remodel of their property. This experience has led to a focus on income properties and garage conversions, which is really cool. They love anything home related and are seriously happiest in construction zones like myself with the ability to visualize a project before it's even started. Their goal is to help others discover and plan for their own dream spaces. They come alongside their clients in project planning, interior design, renovations, and budgeting. Whether you want to create an income producing income producing property or simply redo your bathroom they are here for you most importantly they're the proud parents of two boys and their dog louie emily and ryan welcome to the real build how you guys doing today hi bill thank you so much <laughs> doing great man we're just out here in sunny california enjoying our our lockdown <laughs> yeah yeah we're all we're all enjoying this uh this lockdown of course um i mean it's it's great to have you guys on too. Me and you, me and Ryan connected on uh, Instagram actually. And then as, as I kind of researched further into you, Ryan, and then it came across Emily and you guys, what you guys are doing. It's definitely interesting. You guys are the first couple I've actually had on my show, which is pretty cool too. So congrats on that one. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to have you guys on uh, and I'm looking forward to discussing what you guys have done and what you guys are doing today. So with that being said, I like always getting started with asking about, you know, your background. So who is Emily and Ryan? And uh, let's hear about you guys' story. Yeah, so I mean, I grew up here in San Luis Obispo, central coast of California, right between LA and San Francisco on the coast. And yeah, really fortunate to you know, grow up in this area. I mean, Oprah calls it uh, the happiest place on earth. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, we're, we're famous as far as this little area out here in California. A lot of people want to retire here. And so there's not a lot of industry though. And although a lot of people move out of the area after college, I got to stay, thankfully. My dad's a builder. And although I learned all the trades and, and enjoyed it growing up, you know, the ups and downs, I wasn't really excited about it. So through college, I was pursuing, you know, other, other interests and nonprofit work and business aspirations. Uh, but I met Emily really early on and found out that she has a, a knack for design and we got sucked back into the home improvement world. And here we are. Right. Yeah. 14 years <laughs> later, we're, we're at it. Uh, husband, wife duo and got our two boys and our, our, our dog and we just get to serve clients every single week. It's been a pleasure. Exactly. I, I grew up just always working with colors and patterns and we moved a lot growing up. And so I felt like I would always take elements in each home and just, I was constantly drawing homes and the front porches, everything. And then I met um, Brian who could actually build all of that for me. So it was <laughs> love at first sight with that. Um, but we have been doing this really since our very first rental. And so we had convinced our landlord to actually help pay for materials. And that was our first project together. Awesome. Yeah. Go ahead. I say out here in California, particularly San Luis Obispo, it's, it's really expensive. If you drive a couple hours inland, you can get homes for, you know, two, 300,000. But here on the coast, you know, it's very desirable. Uh, a decent house in a nice neighborhood is a million bucks. And you know, fresh out of college, you know, it's really expensive. And so we were renters for a while. And that's really how we got started is 
we convinced the owners of these rentals to let us remodel and redesign their units in exchange for either cash payment, discount on rent. We were really creative. Right. And that just helped us realize like, we love this. This is great. And we had really nice rentals to live in too. So after we remodeled them, because this yeah. is a college town too. And so college students had lived in those. And so for multiple years, so ended up transforming them into something that the landlords could then make more money off of after we moved out. Yeah. So we were thinking really outside the box as renters. And now we're trying to kind of take that same mentality as builders talking with our clients. How can we think outside the box to get our clients what they want at an affordable price? Mm -hmm. So. Which is all, I mean, what you guys just said, it's basically the perfect connection. I mean, you got your builder, you got your designer, you guys work well together, obviously, too. And I mean, having that is is so huge. And obviously, you guys probably get along, too, which helps your business, I'm sure, as well, you know. But I, and let's go. So your background, too, is with you, Ryan, you're, you said your dad was in the construction business, so you grew up in it as well? Yes, he's a general building contractor. So every summer I'd work with a different subcontractor, plumbing, electrical, framing. So I got to learn all the trades and find out what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy. And, and so it, it made it really easy for me to get back into it. Um, I'm, you know, in a general building contracting role. Sometimes I'll get my hands dirty, but typically we hire our subs and Emily handles our, all the design. Emily does a lot of the communication with our clients and is just meticulous. So Emily's really what makes our business go from good to excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Which is good. Yeah, you want somebody that's meticulous too and organized, obviously, too. And Emily, you, how did you, as far as the design, um, how, when did you first start getting into the design aspect? When, when did that really first start with you as far as interior design? It would have been over a decade ago, just getting into homes and rentals and seeing this area okay. um, when there was no new construction and in San Luis Obispo. And so really wanting to help with the facelift and just walking around and driving and, you know, then you help friends and then it's something that is just a fun hobby of yours. And then it's like, actually, uh, people are asking to now hire me. I think this is kind of now I'm getting paid for it. And now it's a full-on career which is a dream just to be able to do what you love mm -hmm. awesome and the thing with you too ryan you're a similar situation to me i mean work growing up in the business too I, and actually learning the trades too is is more than anything probably made you better and have more of appreciation of the construction business because i mean growing up my dad was a contractor you know but he made me do everything he made me learn all these trades too and you just said that you're you said you know I did everything I get I still get my hands dirty here and there you know and but you've worked your way up to where you are today too and then having Emily there to help you know it's just it's a perfect combo too and, and that's what you, obviously where you guys are today so you know, kind of going into the next thing. So why did you choose home renovations over other aspects of the construction industry? You brushed on this a little bit, but let's go deeper into this. So why, why renovate? Why do, what, what got you guys into this? Uh, when it comes to renovations, we love casting a vision to our clients for taking them into homes that could be forgotten and homes that could just see beyond repair and helping the worst homes come back to life again mm -hmm. and be the prettiest home on the block. Um, a lot of people will end up seeing a home and only saying, oh, that one's ugly or that one's beautiful and just move on to the next one. But we really want to be able to transform spaces and look at every square foot in a home and utilize it to its fullest extent. And we just saw with a lot of the homes that were older in San Luis Obispo, we knew we could not only end up making a profit off of those, um, but really helping a client at the end of the day get the most bang for their buck in doing a renovation versus just a new build. Yeah, and I would add to that, San Luis Obispo is similar to a lot of the country. We've gone through the same recessions and a lot of homes were built in the 90s. And you know, those homes are getting older now. And so, 
you know, since we started getting into the business, a lot of these outdated homes have been great candidates for renovations. And with how expensive it is to build here, it, uh, the renovations tend to be a better value. And so there hasn't been a lot of new construction until recently. So there are a lot of new construction developments starting to pop up. But by and large, in the construction industry, it's been home renovations that have been very popular. And there's been a lot of client um, opportunity for us in that market. Okay. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure as far as construction prices where you're at, it's similar here where I'm at as, as far as, I mean, our construction prices are up there, but you're seeing a lot more renovation now too, because if homes were just so dated too, I mean, if they were built in the nineties, I mean, and especially with the Mediterranean designs and stuff, those were, those were very popular back then, as you guys know, with the arches and, you know, the dark colors, the Browns everywhere. And it's just, now that's on it's on the way <laughs> now it's on the way out as you know and i'm sure you can touch on that a little bit too but you know things are changing so fast and then the design too i mean there's always especially with the the world we live in today it's like there's always something different and it's 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 a heck of a business to be in i'm sure you guys really enjoy doing what you're doing cuz it's a constant change you got to keep up on it that's for sure Right. I mean, not only with the building codes, but every single client has a different mm -hmm. team. So we've never done the same exact design twice. It's yeah. always been different. And I love that. And we love that aspect of it. Yeah. And Emily does a great job of trying to steer her clients towards um, colors and designs that are more timeless. You know, there's some flashy, you know, accent walls or designs that that clients want and you just need to remind them you know five years from now you may be wanting to change all that because you know things change and there's a lot of designs that are safe and timeless and beautiful and so Emily does a great job of steering her clients in the right direction while also letting them be creative and yeah I mean and let's let's go let's go more in on that too as far as timeless designs and everything in because it is true. I, I mean, there is a lot of clients and obviously me being in the custom home world, I deal with it quite often too, where somebody wants something that's a little bit out there. Yes, most of the time we are, we want to give, we have to give them what they want, but we also give our input, like you just said, you know, as far as, eh, maybe you should think twice about that it might be on the way out. I know one thing, and I've talked to other designers too, and Emily, you might be able to attest to this, that the shiplap phase of, uh, you know, the Chip and Joanne special on HGTV, shiplap everywhere is kind of on the way out. You know, I still have people that want it and they want quite a bit of it. And there's designers that I've talked to that said in the next two years, they're going to be ripping that off their walls. So what do you guys, what, what do you what do you think is more timeless now? What are you seeing that's more timeless in the design of the things? Using solid, using white, really. I, I love white um, because you can constantly use the accents in pillows and chairs. Mm -hmm. They're really easy to end up changing. And so you want to think of things in your house that are the most expensive, like the wood flooring possibly. Don't pick just a completely... A dark mahogany color or because that's going to date your house in a certain era um, or just a solid like honey colored it's I like to end up always bringing in texture and to where the different tones in the wood you can end up changing it out in the pillows or different throws and different things that you bring in so end up having white I love I love white I love just bright and airy and so you can always interchange things with what you hang up on your wall as well. Just what you put on your table. Just really easy to update always with that. But Ryan knows that. I have him. Ryan is not, I mean, he's, I've, I have, I like, I have four boys. So, you know, Ryan and Landon and Wyatt. And then we have Louie, our little dog. So it's <laughs> four boys and I have a white couch and all white walls, but I love it. <laughs> But with shiplap, I know you mentioned shiplap, and it's something that we do have clients that still are hardcore on that farmhouse feel. Mm -hmm. But you can still have that, but let's just do it like maybe on one bathroom wall yeah. or just accent it in different areas to where you can still appease the client and yet 
know that they won't be hopefully ripping it off in two mm. years. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, there's not, nothing. I like the look. I like the farmhouse look, too. I mean, I just know as far as the trend, too, is kind of steering. Because I've seen some heavy, heavy shiplap houses, too, obviously. And ones we've, we, we've done in the past, too, where they wanted it all up the wall, the beadboard, everything, that, that type of deal, too. So, I mean, it's, it's, and now I'm seeing more, and I've talked about this in past podcasts, I'm seeing more clean lines. Um, we're still doing a lot of detail in the ceilings, but it's more timeless. So it's more, and you're still bringing in browns and stuff, but it's just not that heavy, heavy wood that you used to see with the Mediterranean. I remember some of the, when I was younger, some of the studies my dad would do, and it was just heavy wood, heavy, you know, it's just all wood, all dark woods, but now it's the lighter feel. Everything's a little bit more just easier to clean, maintain, so on too. So, and Ryan, as far as you, what are you seeing on the building end? Um, in your opinion, uh, in what regards, just as far as design, let's say design, um, you know, building design or style, uh, of the homes. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's definitely a lot of the clean lines, like you said, is becoming really popular and, you know, instead of, you know, the, the arches and then, you know, the curved, you know, mm. in and out kind of landscape like a lot of like clearly defined spaces, clean lines, you know, squares, less, less circle, you know, shapes. And, you know, the, when it comes to renovations, you know, the, a lot of people are looking at Pinterest and on Instagram and, you know, the, all the more popular images out there, people are, are referencing in order to come up with their designs. When we have clients, we normally open up a, a Pinterest board and they're fine in, in, all the stuff they like online and mm. that's you know where we we steer them in that direction we try to right yeah we, we have a private pinterest board with all of our clients and so it's it's neat to sometimes end up seeing oh they definitely know their style and then other ones were like oh that was a mediterranean house and wait now you like victorian and wait now and it's <laughs> But then it's easy because you can pick out the different elements and if you compile all of them. And so we work with our clients and communicate on that platform too, but always have it private. So they're not like, who else is seeing this? Yeah. So. And stealing our ideas and so on. Yeah. The Pinterest, you got to love the Pinterest specialty. Everybody, we deal with it too, where everybody brings us a nice picture from Pinterest and said, I want this exactly how it is. So, you know, stair railings, everything we've, Seen it all with Pinterest. You gotta love it though, too. So anyway, relationship for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so you guys, you say whether you want to create an income producing property or simply redo your bathroom. Emily Ryan Homes is here for you. Let's talk about the different renovations you guys do. So let's discuss this a little bit more. Yeah. So. A lot of it all started, you know, as far as the shift in our business when we did a two year live in remodel. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's new construction uh, where people are typically living in a, a, the current house they own or they're in a rental and then they bought a lot and they're, they're building a new home. And then in our space where we're doing home renovations, oftentimes homeowners are living in the house as we are remodeling it. I mean, sometimes they'll, you know, get a, a rental or an apartment or stay with mom and dad. But, um, you know, oftentimes it's very stressful and they're living in the house. And so we did a two year live in remodel. And first thing we did was convert our garage into a guest unit. And so we lived in the guest unit while we remodeled the rest of the property. And so that was kind of our way of making it less stressful was let's have a completely finished nice space at the time it was just emily i and our son landon okay. and so we had a, a beautiful i mean 500 square feet doesn't sound like a lot but you know we kind of use a lot of tiny house you know type strategy and making good use of every space and we had the nice countertops and the full-size fridge and you know got it permitted as an adu and it was a, we did vaulted ceilings. Like it, it didn't feel small to us. And in fact, when we moved into the main house, we kind of missed our little space because it uh, didn't, you know, it was so easy to clean because it was so small. <laughs> so, yeah, th this, that experience helped us realize that 
you know, it can be really stressful. And, you know, how can we improve the home renovation experience? And so we've really branched into a lot, you know, we've done landscape projects, we've done kitchen remodels, you know, you know, anywhere from $30,000 remodels up to $150,000, you know, most of the property. And so we're not being too picky right now. And we are in a small town. And so we kind of take what we can get as far as business. We have, thankfully, more than we can handle right now, a lot of business. Um, but yeah, I mean, kitchen remodels, you know, the most recent remodel we did was over 100,000. And it was just the entire property. They bought a 30 year old house and they just wanted to make it, they just wanted to freshen it up. So paint, flooring, fixtures, um, we did tons of artificial turf, in-ground trampoline in the backyard, and we just try to make their house fun, make it fit them, and uh, freshen it up, you know, with the colors and the textures that made it feel like home to them. So uh, we are slowly starting to steer into a focus of uh, garage conversions and guest units, because that's such a part of our story. Because um, like I think you mentioned it, like you did mention at the beginning, we funded our whole property remodel through our garage conversion. So um, when we moved into the main house, we started, we rented, um, well, <laughs> let's, let's roll back a little bit. As we lived in the main house, we rented, as we, as, as we moved into the garage conversion, we rented out the main house. So we had five tenants living in the five bedroom main house. Wow. They were paying for the remodel. Um, they were college students, happy to live on the property, great guys. And, you know, our background was in property management. And so I'm, I'm used to renting to, to college students. And so when we, when they moved out of the house and we moved into the main house, we turned that garage conversion into a guest unit Airbnb. And we used the revenue from that to pay for the rest of the remodel of the property. So it was, it was really unique. And it was a lot of fun. And we think there's a lot of other millennials and people out there who want to be creative and who don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank. And so we think we can really help them. And we think um, Airbnbs and garage conversions, you know, are a creative way, a different way to, to do remodels. So that's unique. And that's what we're, what we're focusing on more and more. Yeah, no, that's all. Awesome. And I'm going to hit on a couple of things, what you just said too. One thing is, and that's, I had a good feeling about having you guys on this show is just because you just, what you just said, you want to change the way, you know, the remodel business is done and you want to do it the right way too. Because as you know, there's, there's so many remodel people and that's why I started this show too, because I have a passion for helping people, but doing it the right way. And what you said right there too, you go, we want to do it the right way. We want to teach people how to, you know, the right things and how to do this process because it's not an easy process. You know, it's, a, it's, it's, it's very stressful, obviously. There's a lot of money involved. And that's another thing that I like what you're doing too is because the, to teach the millennial person or somebody that doesn't have a ton of money for a remodel too and teach them how they can do it more efficiently more cost efficiently too there's not a lot of people out there most people just want the big you know the big bucks let's let's see how much we can charge them we'll charge them as much as possible the way you're doing it especially in the area and that's more a little bit more expensive but you do have those people that maybe can't afford to remodel they have a house they want to you know they're they're sitting in quarantine right now they're looking at this old you know this everything is old the countertops are old the cabinet what am i doing i want to rip all this out myself and do it all myself but they don't know how and then they can hire you guys to come in and, and teach them how to do it affordably, you know, affordably. That is what's big time right there. I mean, I, I love the strategy and what you guys are doing and, and so on. So I love what you guys just said right there. That's awesome. Good for you on that. It's a good strategy. So that's for sure. Um, let's, let's go into the next thing. You, you say you, that you bridge the gap between homeowner and, and builder. Uh, no matter how small or large the space. So how are you doing this? Well, our ultimate goal is to save homeowners time, stress, and money. 
And a lot of times when you, a homeowner ends up hiring a builder, they look to them in order to do everything in their home, get everything done. But as a homeowner, you need to take on the responsibility and educate yourself before you even hire that builder. You need to cast a home vision. You need to know your budget. You need to know industry timelines. And so that's why we started uh, Emily Ryan Homes. We saw a lot of homeowners being taken advantage of either by other builders as well, um, or them just really not having the clear communication with their builder. And so with that disconnect, we like, we need to make some online courses on this. Let's, let's go, let's help others. And so let's help people save money. Let's show them all of the tricks that we did, you know, in our current house and in all of our previous remodels of, you know, rentals. How can people save money to do things wisely and to see every dollar um, just be put to its best use? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And once that was basically right, what I brushed on before too, I mean, there's nothing really out there if you think about it that can help people budget friendly, teach people how they can save money, but still remodel a home and add value to that home too. You know, because once again, a home is such a big asset and such a big investment a lot of people go all in on a house and they don't have that money left over to remodel something or do do something or renovate it. So, I mean, that's kind of getting into the like a next thing I just wanted to touch on with your, your online courses too. Let's, let's talk a little bit about those. And I know I'm going off script here with you guys a little bit, but um, you know, no, that's, and that's what this is all about too. I mean, just, you guys are you guys are helping people and that's what I love that's what the show's about that's what it's it's all about helping the customer but it's also bringing you know contractors realtors and 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 uh insurance people everybody I've had on so far has that same mentality about the client and they have a passion to help the client just like you guys are and that's why you guys are doing something different with your online courses and, and trying to teach people the remodel process too. So talk a little bit about that too, because that's, that's so important. Um, what you guys are, are starting to do with your online courses. Yeah. Again, Emily touched on it. The, what we found in talking with friend after friend who was doing a major remodel or even new construction is that universally no one was satisfied with the experience. In fact, the experiences, it's horrible, it's frustrating, it's stressful. And, um, you know, we started doing research like uh, home remodels and construction projects are a big cause for divorce. They're uh, huge sources of conflict, you know, and it, it takes away a lot of your, your spare time, your free time, your social life, uh, your money. And uh, it's, it's very challenging. I mean, we're in a day and age where, we have all these reality TV shows, you know, flipping houses and these remodel projects, and it's so simple, you know. There's the plan, and then oh, this problem comes up, and then it's solved. Oh, <laughs> you know, wonderful, just gorgeous result. And there's so much more stress and issues that happen behind the scenes that that we don't see when watching the TV. And uh, so, with all of our friends universally, like none of them having a positive experience, like like we should be in this business and, and really helping people have a, a more positive uh, home improvement experience. I mean, yes, there will be stress, but we really think it just comes down to educating the homeowner on the front end. They're, they're typically not educated enough and they have unrealistic expectations. So we just have the desire to communicate as much as we can on the front end and get them prepared for this project and not just be prepared, but how can you uh, be proactive and, and have a good experience and so it's it's fun to feel like we're we're not just you know helping you know people get nice homes we feel like we're helping um relationships and helping um people personally as well because at the end of the day if you have that beautiful home but if you don't have your family inside of it it's really not a home and having that beautiful remodeled kitchen is not worth the relationships that you might have to sacrifice in order to get that kitchen per se. So we really do walk our clients through like, 
a project checklist through their budget, through common mistakes, and we warn them about different things. We have handouts on, hey, how to hire a right builder, and, you know, and then here's some red flags. Here's questions that you need to ask them. Like we lay it all down for them. Um, and it, a lot of people, unfortunately, just go to a builder and ask for a quote, and then they go to the next one. And it's not only about the numbers. And it's really about the trust and how you want to end up, uh, who, who's really going to be invited into your daily life for the next six months, year, potentially. It, you, you have to like the individual. It, it all comes down to communication. And so we really push that. And just really, it's, it's really focused around family as well. Um, we've had, unfortunately, three different, um, three different couples, um, sweet couples, but this uh, remodel tore each one of their relationships just apart, um, which then tore their families apart. They do have kids, um, two of them. And so seeing some of that firsthand as well, there's not an emphasis on family and relationships. And we really just get to the core of that as well, while ultimately serving the client, wanting them to get their home remodeled or something changed in their home. Well, what you just said too, I mean, and I've, 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 I'm a big advocate of everything you guys just said too. The main thing is the relationship to build that relationship, what you guys are doing is you're setting the expectation up front. And I've said this multiple times before is you're, you're basically telling people, okay, here, here's what you guys need to expect. This is going to be, you know, what can happen along the way we can ha we could run into this, we can run into that. Uh, if this happens, just be prepared for it because you are remodeling a home. And as you guys know, too, you with remodels and especially older homes you open a can of worms that sometimes you don't know what you're you punch out you know you knock out a piece of drywall something's gonna something can start spraying out of the wall for all you know on an older house so you know you just never know what's gonna happen so what you guys are doing is doing it the right way where you're setting the expectation but along the way if something does happen you're still these people they know what, okay, you can refresh on that and say, hey, remember at the beginning I told you this? Because in building, we do it all the time, and I'm big on this. Right up front, which unfortunately a lot of people tend not to remember, but I try and tell them, you know, okay, this can be a cost. This can be a cost later on. So you need to know this. So if you're going to another builder and you're just worrying about a number, you know, and just looking at a number, well, what's this builder giving you for that? What are they giving you for that? And then they kind of just look at me like, well, they didn't really say anything about that. Well, you know, I, you, you wonder why their price is less, you know, or you wonder, and then later on, they're in an argument with them. And you can tell too, I can tell because the house is taking longer than it should because they're in an argument. So, you know, and somebody's not paying somebody and so on. So I'm so big on that setting the expectation, but all, along the way too, there's give and take, you know, I just had a customer today. I just dealt with it today is that he there was a paint issue he showed us a picture of a house that he really loved the colors everything this is what he wanted well his wife went a different direction she went with a gray he wanted a beige polar opposite colors here so on the trim so he comes in town he sees the trims gray his, that his wife picked and approved from us and he is livid he says that wasn't the color i showed you guys a picture so on so what do we do as a builder we can just say most builders would say well you picked it sorry you got to pay to have it repainted but us as the builder what do we do at rk rhyme construction we say um you know what we'll work with you on this you did give us the picture your wife approved the color so it's nobody's fault here let's work together on this and we'll change the color it's just paint it's not like a wall or block wall or something like that. Let's fix this, make it work. So, you know, there's other things too that we're taking care of on our end and we're going to chalk it up as a loss as a builder, but most people wouldn't do that, you know? And so that's what similar to what you guys are doing too, is doing that going above and beyond setting the expectation up front and then, and forming those long lasting relationships because people remember, I mean, they don't, they remember the hiccups throughout a process more than they remember the good times. But once you get to the end, you want that smile on the face. That's what matters. And that's what I've 
learned with this business too is you can have your your little bumps in the road here and there but towards the end if they're happy you know that's what they're going to remember is their happiness and you taking care of them at the end too that's the thing that long-term relationship so for sure um so we are you know and i wanted to go into this too because obviously everybody is going through some hard times and we're in some different times some weird times right now that we've all never experienced before you know where a lot of people are stuck at home so let's let's discuss some small do-it-yourself projects people can do during you know quarantine because obviously like i said too a lot of people are probably at home and they're looking around their houses and looking at their cabinets and the paint colors on the walls and cringing because they <laughs> you know so what are some things people can do well uh spring cleaning for sure go through your house only have out the things that you love that truly express like what you what you want your home to be or become a really easy fix that anyone can do at home is just change their doorknobs just around the house. It's such a quick facelift. Um, and so make sure if you're taking off the hinges though, please have two different two people helping on that. <laughs> uh, the painting as well, just a wall, just do like an accent wall. Um, there are awesome companies right now that also have removable wallpaper. That you can try it out you don't have to hire anyone but you can actually do it yourself you can get a little squeegee even from the dollar store and apply it with that um do projects that end up bringing you joy into your house and so um i really recommend anything diy that also is involving your kids during this time all all the kids are home uh just during lockdown so make sure that your kids feel like they're a part of the process, if at all possible. Obviously, you don't want them around any power tools, but when it comes to, you know, mixing a can of, cane, of, of excuse me, paint or mixing a little bit of concrete and making a, you know, a brick fireplace or something like that. We had at our time, our three-year-old did that with Ryan and he was all about just mixing. And so he's eight now, um, our oldest, but he's like, I did that fireplace. Like that was mine. Do you like it? You know, when other people come over. So kids really remember those things too. So we just really want to overemphasize family in this. Yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I don't like uh, high maintenance landscapes and we have everything on drip. You're, you're not going to see me watering the lawn with a hose or, or, or individual potted plants. Like I want to spend time with my family and so have everything on drip. And so if you've added plants, you have to water by hand, you know, if you can get it on drip, that would be great. And oftentimes, you know, the drip will be tied into the, the irrigation system that's maybe watering the lawn and you may have valves and a, you know, a central timing system. And, but if you don't want to install any of that, there's actually a, a simple solution. You can buy it for like, 40 bucks, you can buy a, a timer that's battery powered that plugs right into the hose bib and has, you know, a Y kind of split valve so you can still plug your hose in and you can run a drip line right out of your hose bib and have it on a timer. And so that's something I've recently done is just, I have a, a new planner that I made and I just, I, didn't, I don't want to maintain it or remember. So I just, I got that little device that I mentioned. Um, it's just a timer that's battery powered that plugs into your hose bib. And so I got, you know, people are doing gardening now, growing their own food because they don't want to go to the grocery store. Like, you know, build a, a little garden and put it on a drip so you don't have to put all that time into maintaining it. Love that. Yeah, those are, those are definitely some things to consider too. I mean, even with door handles, that was one thing. Um, cabinet hardware too. I mean, that's another thing I did at my house and it was, it was changed the whole cabinet, the way, the way it looked too. So small stuff like that. And then with the kids being involved too, obviously if you just be careful if they're younger, letting them paint because you might end up with uh, some colorful walls and so on, I'm sure. But um, no, that's great. I, I love that having the kids involved and so on too. That's, that's great, great tips right there. So what are some tips people should know to save time and expenses when planning on a home improvement project? The most time consuming aspect is actually the planning before you even hire 
a builder or an architect, I, I do think one of the first people that you want to come alongside you is a designer in the home project and just make sure that you have a very clear home vision. Know what you want instead of you just approaching the builder. You know, like you said earlier, here's that Pinterest photo. This is exactly what I want. A lot goes behind that picture and behind yeah. all just every detail adds up. And so take the time, know the vision of your home. We do talk about that a lot, um, just with our clients and in our online courses. Your home vision is like your compass. It's gonna direct your decisions within your home. If you want a home that is for uh, like hosting and if you want more entertainment, okay, then we're gonna end up making a really large like kitchen, dining area. If you just want a very just tranquil, like peaceful home, we might just create more nooks around and inside your home in order to, you know, have a little bit more of just like little little areas where you can go and rest. So it really is always dependent upon the client and, and their needs. Yeah, I mean, saving money is, you know, it's tough. The, like construction has gotten more and more expensive. It's really ramped up, I think, the cost of building in the last three years. Um, I joke around with my dad, you know, because he's notorious for not being able to quote a job because he still thinks back to the good old days. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's expensive now. Materials are so much more expensive and subcontractors charge more. And, you know, there's, um, you know, insurance and, you know, a lot of liability that builders have to take on. And so costs, you know, are, are more expensive now, but the homeowner, you know, they just, you know, if they're, if they're willing to, they need to find a builder that can be creative that, you know, the bill, some builders were to say, you just got to replace the cabinets. Well, why not sand them down and repaint them? You know, the, the builder, you want to find a builder that wants to work within your budget and is going to try to help you get the most for your dollar. So having the right builder is very important. And Emily said that, you know, she emphasized the importance of a designer. A lot of builders um, that are, have smaller companies, they, they don't have a designer. So they may not be able to help you, you know, make those design decisions with the color decisions and that can make the project you know, um, more expensive if you got to go out and hire an independent designer. So um, finding the right builder is, is so important. Um, but, you know, really thinking about your expense, you know, long term, like we're doing a lot more artificial turf because water's really expensive. We have shortage of water in California in recent years and water bills are super high. And so a lot of people are interested in doing artificial turf. So that's a long term savings even though it's more upfront cost um people are installing you know, hot water recirculation pumps a lot out here in california to save on water so when you turn on the faucet across the house you have instant hot water you're not waiting you know three four minutes mm -hmm. you know, in some really really old houses you have to wait a long time for the the, the water <laughs> so yeah those are just a couple of things people can save money and a big part of it is just thinking outside the box having a creative builder or yourself um, taking the time to really think through if, if you need this or if it's, you know, just your neighbor has it. So you want it, you know, a lot of the planning comes down to communication and know that story that you just mentioned earlier about, you know, the wife wanting gray and the husband wanting the beige and who's going to be the point person. We have that clearly defined too. Um, and communication with all of our clients but we recommend that for any homeowner builder relationship where you sit down with your spouse significant other your family members whoever's living with you and make sure that everyone's always involved in the conversation because everyone's going to be going through the room the kids but makes make sure that one person is the point person that who's going to be the person paying, who has the ultimate decision either on interior, exterior. You have to have all of that very clearly defined and just to save for those unforeseen, um, you know, little, little disputes between uh, significant others. Yeah, no, I mean, what you it's, and that's a, it's communication throughout this process is obviously the main thing that everybody has to be on the same page and every, and, and like you just said too, 
having somebody there and we have somebody in house that i mean she takes notes on everything pictures everything too and that that's how we were kind of covered in this situation she goes listen here's the photos of what you accepted on the paint color and here's here's you know and you approved it through this email so you know it's not us as the builder that messed up it was a husband and wife you know a little communication issue but we're willing to work with you like i said to you know to make this right make everybody happy and move on from it too because it's paint paint's paint we could always correct paint it's yeah it's a cost it's an expense but why not just move forward and and be done with it instead of argue about it so it, it's so big and 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 Ryan, spot on as far as your your dad, as far as the expenses thing. Yeah, I'm in the same boat where, you know, and he'll say, how much? Why is that that much? And you're, you know, like he's not used to the prices. A cabinet's how much now? You know, so spot on with that whole thing right there. But um, no, I mean, it's it, it's kind of like it, as a builder, you know, or a remodel person or whatever, a contractor in general, it is your job to be there to help the client if the client is over budget it's your job to have somebody in-house that's going to guide them to get them below budget because let's face it there's a lot of choices now for them too so when you're going to pick out countertops and they pick out you know a, a quartzite versus a quartz and quartzite obviously is going to be a lot more money well i'm sure there's a quartz or we can downgrade maybe or we can go to a certain granite or something that still has that same flow or this at this cost or maybe there's scrap uh that was left over from another project that you can reuse on a bathroom or so on it's it's our job as the contractor to to kind of help them I mean, I have another, I had a cabinet situation where she, uh, she um, a lady, she picked out some high, high end cabinets. Well, when the price came in, those high, high cabinets weren't so exciting anymore, you know, when she saw the number. So we went back, it was our job. We have a girl in house. She went back and took her back and met her there at the cabinet place again went through some other choices that were similar but less expensive to get her budget way down to where it needed to be so that's where we come in too like you you guys both said i mean it's just all about communication helping them and guiding them too and unfortunately not every builder does that they just say oh here's your bill here's your upcharge pay me you know so right we have um they be they're they're in over four years right now with their build it's a beautiful home over it's right on the coast and uh it, they're a sweet couple that we've gotten to know throughout just the process process and i feel like we're maybe their their way of like we understand what everything that's going on but sometimes people just end up needing to to vent as well all of the building frustrations but unfortunately in their case it was exactly um, what you had just mentioned, just a builder upcharging them instead of, you know, coming alongside their, their clients and helping them achieve the budget goal. It really comes down to, to budget in a mm -hmm. lot, a lot of areas in construction. Well, I've learned too. I mean, it, as far as the upcharges too, if you, if you kind of tell them what to expect ahead, you know, like, okay, when you're at, let's go back, I'll keep using granite. Let's go back to the granite or the um, countertop. So you, if they pick something out and you, you set the expectation, it's back to that again. And you say, okay, this is going to be over your budget. You tell them right then and there, you don't wait. You say, we can go to this, you can save the money there, or we can do this, but you're going to pay more. And you say it there. And then they agree there. Well, when you do do that upcharge later on, now they're going to realize, okay, because nobody likes an upcharge. Nobody does, let's face it, right? Whether it's appliances, countertops, cabinets, whatever it is, nobody likes that. But if you kind of are there and you tell them ahead of hand and say, okay, if you really like this, go with what you want. If you can afford it, go with what you want because you're going to be disappointed that if you go less, you're going to say shoulda, coulda, what? Well, people, the mindset changes. And I've, I've learned that with people too, because when you just slap a bill in front of them, they're going to raise hell. So, you know, so anyway, but, um, so we all know, let's go and we all know home improvement is, it can be stressful, obviously, like, you know, you, you guys touched on, you watch the HGTV shows, everybody's smiling, they're all happy. And, 
And then a day later, the house is a brand new house. Well, we all know that doesn't happen. So, you know, there's a lot of stressful things in it. What are some tips uh, to reduce stress during the home improvement process? Yeah, I mean, one is to have realistic expectations. You know, there will be unforeseen circumstances that come up. And, you know, we really think every homeowner should have milestones and uh, that they can celebrate, you know, because you have less social time, less money in your bank account. There's all these sacrifices typically during the process of renovating a home. And so if you can kind of create some milestones where, you know, when we get the flooring in, we're going to all go out and celebrate, you know, and, and do this. Or when we get the, the counters in, you know, we're going to, you know, do this, or we're going to have a, these friends over when our kitchen is done. And that's going to be the reward for this, this big sacrifice. You want to have something at the end of the tunnel to light at the end of the tunnel to where um, it's not just enjoying the house, but you get a, you maybe have an experience to kind of celebrate like a, like a birthday party kind of for, for your house. <laughs> so I think that's great. And, you know, we, we recommend, you know, especially in our space, um, home renovations, a lot of people do live in, you know, renovations, uh, during demo, you should maybe consider going on a little vacation and, um, you know, getting away and not just suffering the whole way through. Like you, you can't take time for yourself. It's important to still try to have that, that personal wellness amidst the home remodel. Right. Yeah. Go to the gym. Don't sacrifice the coffee time with friends. Don't disappear for years or months. Just still make the things that are important to you in your daily life. No, I love that. And I love the, the celebrate the little, you know, kind of like little wins, you know, during the process too. I would, I never thought about that. I might even use that too. And I, cause I mean it, cause even in the home building process, I mean, it's such a long process. So to actually have them celebrate, okay, we're at this point, check this out, look at this and do little celebrations like that. I mean, that'll keep the, keep them, you know, motivated there because it, it's so stressful. I mean, and it's in here, I don't know as far as where you guys are, but these houses take a while to build because we got some, we have strict codes here. You know, they're all concrete there. It's, it's, it's a process here and it's a long process. I mean, we're tied with some of these people on these bigger homes for you know almost two years. And then we're with them again on a warranty too. So any little thing that you can do, like you guys both just said, is huge too, to kind of just keep the morale up, keep the positivity. And, you know, like I just said with the paint situation, well, to eat that problem, that's going to keep morale up throughout the rest of the build. Because if I said, well, that's your problem, you got to pay for it. You know, those are little things too, to where you, it's give and take as the builder too. You know, it's just, it, that's, that's so big too. I'm going to definitely take a mental note of that one too. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what homeowners can do is one, they, they oftentimes rely on the builder to lead when it comes to communication. But I mean, every homeowner should have a weekly meeting with their builder to get an update, to know what's going on. Yes, there are good softwares where you can, you know, that some builders use to, you know, so they have regular update on what's going on. So, but the homeowner needs to think about what their needs are from a communication standpoint, and they need to make sure those needs are getting met. And we find a builder that will meet those needs so um, that they're not stressed out. If, if the builder, you know, wants to have a once a month sit down meeting and the homeowner, you know, wants to meet every week, then they chose the wrong builder. So, um, yeah, it does come down to choosing the right builder at the beginning. That's going to eliminate a lot of stress. You know, you need to have just really good crystal clear communication. That's one of the most important parts. And yeah, like I said, the celebrating the milestones and, you know, what we do um, in our business is we try to do as many videos as possible um, on the site and just show the, uh, just an upbeat excitement on, on the job site and, showing that, you know, the homeowners are sometimes there and, and sometimes they're not. But when we film and make a video of what's going on on the job side and interacting with the subcontractors and then send the homeowner that video, like that's, you know, that kind of lifts up their morale. So, you know, it's that for them to get to see the progress and see the process is mm -hmm. makes the experience a little bit more enjoyable. 
No, yeah, yeah, I I highly agree with the video stuff too. I actually I started doing a lot more video and walkthroughs of these houses during construction too, and they love it too. And I'm I'm goofy with it. I have fun with it. I joke around. I just posted one actually today of you know I come out of the swimming pool. It's under it's all just concrete and everything. Like I was swimming, you know, just have fun with it, and I get a little laugh out of it. It makes them happy too. But also with the software too, like you just said, Ryan is is it's so big and and when we started implementing the software to try and keep people in the loop more and so on it was huge it was a game changer you know because everybody's on the same page you know and then when we implemented a design team and then also you know having partnered with a design team have have a a good architect that flows with everybody and then also the builder and then the customer on the same page that just brings everybody together even more too and streamlines the process makes it easier and so on and everybody's happy so it's 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 huge it really is just the communication aspect of things too and and video and everything like you said the more people are in the know the smoother the process is going to be hands down yes so um what what, let's go into some, you know, common mistakes that homeowners make during a renovation, you know, that can cost them time and money that you guys have seen. Well, expecting perfection because no job site goes absolutely perfectly. Um, and so I think also just not um, foreseeing anything coming up and we highly recommend at least a 15% contingency budget, depending on the size of the project that they set aside. And so them not setting aside those funds is a common mistake. Also the, the tendency, we call it scope creep, where we'll come into a house and they're just like, I just want the kitchen redone. And oh, well, can you go ahead and do the laundry room? And well, now I want the laundry room countertop to match I don't know, the bathroom countertop. So let's go ahead on in there since the plumber's already coming. And so that's a, a common mistake that they just end up letting a full remodel then just infiltrate possibly throughout their entire house, which did happen with one client this past year. It is a full now over 400 square foot remodel, um, excuse me, 4,000 square foot remodel when it was originally just 400 just in the kitchen. And I was like, so do you remember the first convo? This is going outside of the kitchen now. And they just, they eventually just went for it all, which was great. They love it and we're really happy for them. But at the same time, it's like, that's really a tendency that could then end up eating away at a potential credit card for a couple. And so just the financial stress, um, you know, you really needing to budget before getting into these projects and really know the industry average on the remodels of the kitchen or the bathroom or knocking down a wall, all those little details. Yeah, I mean, and, and I, uh, I highly agree too, because a lot of the times with custom building, things get bigger. They start out with a budget and then they grow and they grow and they grow too. I mean, that's what we run into. But I'm always really open with people right off the bat because I always ask them because I get it every all the time. And uh, we want to build a house. Uh, we have a lot, um, you know, what, what do you guys cost a square foot? That's what I get that, that question. And I, and we don't have a set square foot price. The reason, and that's how I've been answering people because a lot of builders do, they say they have a square uh, set square foot price, but everybody gets aggravated with that because it never ends up that price as a custom builder. You can't really guarantee a square foot price that's set. I can tell you a range and that's what I do. But the first thing I always ask people is what's your budget? right off right right from the beginning i go so what is your budget and if they tell me a budget that i can't even touch i tell them i said we're not the builder that you know for you i'm not going to string people along because that just and i've learned that you can't have everybody you can't build for everybody and you can't maintain that budget because we have that reputation similar to you guys you guys have built a reputation in how you do business to where we don't want to cookie cut anything we want to do it right. We want to have the best products, the best materials in there. And 
believe it or not, the best products and best materials aren't the cheapest materials. So, you know, and, and that's how we kind of have branded ourselves or our reputation is, is, and, and we have a passion for that. And I, I have to turn down people. Then they ask me, well, who's the builder you recommend? I won't recommend any other builders because if you go to a cheaper builder and he somehow screws you over, guess whose name's on that too? Well, Bill Ryman with Ryman Construction told me to go to this builder and they're horrible, you know? So I won't even recommend another builder. I just say, do your research. You know, we're in a small area just like you guys to where everybody knows about everybody. You can search online now, see if anybody's been to court or sued or whatever. Just do your research as much as possible. You know, and that's, that's the biggest thing with this. And, and that's how you avoid mistakes too, is just a lot of word of mouth, ask around, do your research. I mean, you guys have built a reputation and then there's people that know you. I always offer, you know, call any one of our clients, you know, give them a call. Uh, I'll give you a list of five, 10, if you want, we have them, you know, and you can call each and every one of them and they'll testify on our behalf. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's definitely there's a lot of people unfortunately out there that don't want to do the research. They want to base everything off a number and that is a, that's on the top of mind and that's a problem too. And I'm sure you guys face that as well. Yep. Being in a small town, you know, everyone knows everyone and it's, you know, it's so important to, you know, be straightforward about, you know, knowing how much you can get the job done for and not stringing them along. Like you said, mm -hmm. Now, it can be a long process in giving a bid and you want to find out early on if this is going to be a good fit or not. Mm -hmm. Is that and so builder and you're not having, you know, you could want that client. I mean, there have been, you know, just really sweet couples that have come for, for help, but they're like, yeah, we want it to be well under 150 a square foot. Can you do that? And I was like, so are you talking about like, vinyl everywhere and let's see everything mdf and everything it's like i i'm like if you it's just it always depends on the client but it can make us feel a little uncomfortable because you already then know if you know if it's just not the right fit and they're already trying to squeeze mm -hmm. down um it just can look like it might not be the happiest ending unfortunately well right there what you what you said too if it's not the right fit i mean you, being in business, you learn, you learn who's going to work well with you and who's not, yeah, obviously by meeting people, selling them your product, because you guys are the best salesman of your product. If people aren't buying into you and your product, then, you know, and they're just worried about the number and the end of it, then why work with them? You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, you want to work with everybody. Yeah, you want to try and help everybody to the extent that you can, but some people, you know, I've told this story before. I've had people where they're just like, you know, I want this price. It has to be at this price. I'm going to be on the job site every day. I'm going to watch what you guys are doing. If the drywall is crooked, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there and I'm going to call you out for it and so on. This is, this is, I was like, what? All right. All right. I mean, um, okay. And he's like, and then I went to this other, <laughs> I went to this other builder and I saw he does it this way. And I don't understand why you guys are this much more too. And blah, blah. And then, Right there, I was like, all right, um, I thought about it, and I emailed him, that person, that specific person. I just was like, listen, we're not interested right now. We have other projects. I'm sorry. I wish you the best of luck in your search for another builder because we're not your builder. So, it's, you know, sometimes you have to just kind of put your, put your foot down. We can't work with everybody we want to. I mean, it's, it's human nature. We, we want to help everybody make money and so on but sometimes it's just it's not worth it and they just don't appreciate the product that you guys are delivering or that we're delivering and it's all about this and then too so right yeah so anyway um one thing too i wanted to ask you guys um when you walk through one of your renovation projects what are the areas that stand out most uh with your with your guys's projects do you have a trademark that you are known for what are your main highlights this with emily and ryan i i think every single space looks different and when when we started our business um i remember ryan 
sitting down and him ask, actually asking me like, so what is it the one thing that we're gonna be, we're gonna be known for? And I, I then said, oh, I never want anyone to walk into a space and be like, Emily completely designed this space. And we know like with Ryan's craftsmanship, he just, and our subs, they were on site and they did this work. I want someone to always be able to walk into their friend's home and be like, this home is exactly you. And so with that, I, I really want to see our clients expressed in their spaces, but we really love in each one of them bringing that outside in and the inside out. And so having consistency, like when you walk up to a home, having whatever's on the exterior also reflected on the interior of the home and the home just to have a good flow. We don't want each room to be themed. <laughs> we already you know in different eras. And so we want everything just to have a good flow and for it to be functional and just really for it all just to flow really well together with whatever the client style is. And so with each one of the spaces that we have remodeled, the client's style is reflected on the exterior. And then when you walk in, they see it as well. Um, and so just it really complementing the entire space. Yeah, and what's unique about us is we really, we're very transparent and open. We really pride ourselves in over communicating. We want, you know, everyone who we do business with to get a second quote because, you know, we've had instances where, you know, people like us and they just want to hire us. And it's like, that, that's great, but get a second quote just so you have a reference point, you know, as to what we're charging because, you know, if some extras come up and price starts getting high and they wonder, oh, did Brian and Emily not charge us too much? And we, we want them to, because we feel we can provide good value and they won't necessarily know if they don't compare us to others. So um, we're always transparent with the our customers and don't put any pressure on them to choose something specifically or or you you know we don't we're totally fine with them hiring other people we don't put our customers in in pressure situations it's all about uh, them and so yeah it, we really enjoy our customers and we pride ourselves on good communication yeah and one thing emily just touched on too uh that you guys are probably big on that I caught in this whole thing too, is she brought up your craftsmanship too. And that's a trademark in, in itself too, because when you focus on the quality and the craftsmanship of each and every job that you're doing, that's going to stand out more than anything to anybody. You know, that's what we sell ourselves on too. It's so important to us that, you know, I always, every time somebody's in one of our homes, I go, look at all the, look at our trim. You're not going to see any splicing. You're not going to see, you know, all the joints are, glued and nailed and everything's correct there's nothing coming apart or separating because down here in florida we have humidity which can, things can cause to separate so if you have a good trim carpenter you know they're going to glue the joints together they're going to and they're going to stay together no matter what so you know what you guys just said right there too is huge as far as your quality your craftsmanship too you know is it, so important i mean that's that's one of the most important things i'm sure and ryan you'll testify to that because yeah, i'm sure you're a fanatic on the job sites just like us so yeah I mean, uh, using inferior materials and something that's just a band-aid it makes me feel very uncomfortable mm -hmm. and yeah you want to stick within their budget and you want to accomplish all that the customer wants but it's just not realistic if you have a standard of doing a quality job mm -hmm. so yeah sometimes we do need to sell our customers on spending the, the, the few extra dollars to get the job done right. Exactly. And I wanted to go into this one too, because I'm, I'm curious about this. You guys, you have a 12 step process of home improvement success. So let's discuss this. I want to hear about this. Sure. Yeah. So the, the 12 steps that you're referring to is really the whole the whole process of home improvement. You can include this on the show notes if you want, or, you know, it's available on our website. But ultimately, you know, if you break down a home renovation process, there's all sorts of details that um, the customer is not aware of. And so in our online courses, you know, we talk about this 12-step process that, that we created to help minimize stress and save our clients time and money. But it's all about being prepared. 
you know, one of the things that I like on there most is the project preparation checklist, you know, and it's all about going through all those details on the front end, but, you know, and so you can really find out um, all of what goes into it, you know, figure out the full scope of the project before you, you know, dive into it before you start. Right. We only have like the checklist. We have the project pitfalls. That's, that's, only, that's the second one that we have. We go through a full budget where we have an interactive, you know, pie chart that they can end up creating and make it, you know, all the way down to head to the nails if they're doing it themselves. So really our course can be not only for a remodel, for a new build, but also if you're just trying to do it yourself. Like we really want to help people because we can see the full spectrum because we can build the new homes. We do the remodeling. And also we didn't hire anyone for our house. We did it all obviously ourselves too. And so our, our course is also just with the heart of educating the homeowners and at the very at the very end of it you know it's not only with the communication and not only with your neighbors we also involve neighbors in this because if you are going to be remodeling your home they're going to be hearing the noise too and so we want to bring in the city and the county and we want to educate them on when you do need to be bringing in the city or county into your building plans and then the milestones, like Ryan said earlier, the, the celebration times. And so it's really important to keep the spirits up, to keep just the homeowners excited. You could have a party with them or just make sure that they're celebrating as a family. And it doesn't have to be a trip to, to Disneyland on our side, Disney World here on, on yours, but we have, you know, just go out to ice cream, go, go get a pizza, go to the beach for a little bit, but just make it a point just to say, let's celebrate this. Absolutely. No, and I love that. And going on your guys' website too, I mean, it, it, it's really cool what you're doing as far as guiding people and giving them the opportunity to do what you both did and learn themselves how to do it too. Because, because it's, there's people that are afraid to do anything with home improvement, but they can't afford to do it either. I mean, they can go to Lowe's and do it themselves or try and do it themselves, but they're afraid and they don't know the steps to take and they're going on YouTube or whatever it is. You actually are pro doing a step-by-step -step process for these people, which is huge because there's not really anything out there like it. So, I mean, hats off to you guys on doing that and everybody definitely needs to check it out too because... I mean, I'm, I'm, well, if you guys want to go even more into detail, what else you guys offer on that, on your site too, go right ahead. Cause it's, I was looking through it too. And obviously we've kind of brushed on certain things with the home improvement. So let's go into that. What, what other stuff are you guys offering, you know, to perspective people thinking about getting into uh, remodels and so on, on the site? Cause you had a lot of stuff on there. So I'll let you go into it. Thank you. Well, yeah, we had mentioned we have our, we call it smart home improvement because you, you want to be smart. You want to be improving your home in not only the right way, but doing it to where you're going to be saving money at the end of the day and where you're going to be hiring the right builders. So we want to be giving you the tools and empowering you to be able to do it yourself. With us, when we converted our garage into a luxury guest unit, um, we ended up having that as a vacation rental. And so Everyone knows that with a vacation rental, it's all about being a super host if you're on Airbnb. And so we didn't see a lot of things out there specifically geared towards vacation rentals and online courses. And so we did a, a course, um, just a simple one, a step-by-step -step guide on how to not only become a super host really quick, but also to be getting those five-star ratings, how to get the return guests, all the little, the little details that you can end up doing to not only get higher ratings, um, but I mean, in when it comes to our vacation rental, I mean, we've had over 750 guests in there and it's awesome. It's our converted garage. It's so easy for me just to go in there, you know, have always that quick extra set of sheets and just do little set little things here and there to where people just feel loved and we have just so many return guests with that and so 
that is something that we are passionate about is creating just something that's income producing if you have the ability to do that on your property. Which, yeah, I mean, even, and, and we, we, I know we brushed on this at the beginning before we even started recording this too, but the vacation rental thing is huge too. And what you guys did with that so big, big time too, because there's so many people, especially in my area that are wanting to buy investment properties and they're strictly weekly rentals or, or monthly rentals. So, you know, and they don't know really, they'll buy the property. They don't really know that the, you know, less or less expensive ways to kind of fix it up and make it into something that's more appealing to guest or on Airbnb or five star property and so on. So what you guys did there is awesome. Even though right now, obviously vacation rentals and a lot of areas aren't taking place, uh, probably by the end of the month here in Florida. Yeah. End of the month, you know, it's a new month already. Times are, <laughs> we don't even know what the hit is, but, uh, um, you know, it, it, by the end of the month here in Florida, I know they're going to open up rentals again. And, and there, it's just a lot of people are doing them. It's a, it's a popular source of income too, but they don't know how to go about it. They don't know how to do the design. They don't know little renovations they can do too. So, you know, that's something everybody should definitely check out along with all your other courses for sure. Because I mean, you guys are doing it right. You're teaching people stuff that a lot of people don't know. I mean, these are questions that a lot of people have that they scour the internet to try and find out. And a simple blog on doing it yourself is not really going to cut it. So, you know what I mean? But yeah, um, I was going to say that, you know, we're not going to teach you how to be a plumber or how to be an electrician. Mm -hmm. you know, we can't, you know, we're not taking on that liability. Yeah. No. <laughs> You know, we, we can walk you through the whole process in detail. We have all these downloadable worksheets. You know, we do have a paid, you know, um, smart home improvement masterclass, which, you know, we'll do some one-on-one -on -one coaching and we'll really get into the nitty gritty and we'll be there for you, you know, going back and forth and meeting up, you know, online to really help you through your home improvement project. Um, but we know many people, especially during this time, they just need a, a smaller training that is going to give them all the details so they know what they're getting into. And so during this time, uh, this lockdown time, we made that free. So we have a, a free course for anyone to check out. It goes through pretty much everything, you know, our project preparation, everything you need to know to be prepared going into a major renovation or new construction project, and then all the potential pitfalls you can fall into. And so, yeah, we want to educate as many people as possible. So that's just a free train that we're giving away and uh, excited to help a lot of people just be prepared for their, their home project because it can be so stressful. And, um, right. you know, like, like we've said, our goal is to save people time, stress, and money because uh, it's not happening on most projects. Right. And people are spending more time now at home more than ever. And so yeah. I may just like our, our mini courses free during this time. And then all for, for all of your listeners, we'll just do our master class, um, our smart home improvement thing at Pop Off. So we'll be sending a link your way. All right, perfect, perfect. And just just so they know if they're listening or what, where can they find the free home improvement course? Where can they find that at? emilyryanhomes.com. Okay, perfect. And so I want to get into, I love this question and, and I've been asking everybody this question. I've gotten a different answer every single time. That's why I just keep on asking it. Uh, like I've said this before, I think I'm just going to make a combined or a compilation video of everybody's answer to this question because everybody's got an amazing answer. So what about you both personally? What lessons have you learned throughout your journey that we should all apply to our own business or lives that can help us grow? Deep question. Well, what I would say is a lot of people choose what they do or even within an industry, they choose um, you know, a focus of what they do because they see someone else doing it or they admire someone, they wanna be like them. Well, it's so important to really know yourself. Like one of the things that I think we bo both spent a lot of time is getting to know ourselves. What makes us happy? Like what, you know, what gives us joy? Like what stresses us out? And self-awareness is so important. And any, anyone who, you know, is aspiring to be an entrepreneur or, 
um, whatever you're pursuing for a career, you, you have to be happy and you have to enjoy what you do. And yeah, like, you know, like Bill, you've talked about how, you know, you were clearing trenches, you know, and doing grunt work, you know, on the job site with your dad. And, you know, I, I was too. And, you know, we, we learn constantly every year, um, you know, what we like and what we don't like. And we really need to define specifically um, what, who we are and what we want to pursue and what makes us happy. And so for us, we've, we've found that this is what we love doing, not just home improvement, but helping people have save time, stress, and money on their home projects. Um, that brings us a lot of joy. So whatever we can do to reach more people online and help them with their projects, like that's just really important to us. And it's what makes us happy. So people need to choose careers and they need to focus on something that just gives them joy, gives them a sense of purpose. Love that. For me, I, I think a lot of it comes down to to listening, not only in business, but in, in relationships, I mean, with clients, uh, and especially you have to listen to them to cast their vision for their home. And so that also needs to be adhered into your personal life as well. So just really listening and it comes down to communication. I know that we've talked so much about, but just really being able to listen and truly hear someone it can be applied to all areas of life. And more specifically on that, even something we try to do in our marriage is when we communicate with one another, specifically, we try to repeat back verbatim what the other person said. So it's not just like, oh yeah, I, I heard you on that, or it sounds good, let's do it. It's <laughs> no, let's repeat back specifically what the other person said and then ask, did I get that right? You know, like with really make sure that you're, you're crystal clear on your communication. Yeah, so for anybody that's married out there, take notes right there. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, that that's actually huge. I mean, because it's almost like you guys by you guys doing that too. I mean, you're you're teaching yourself to listen more to people as well and your clients and so on. Because as we know, you know, that's that's a lot of business people's problems is listening. They don't listen to exactly what their customers want they don't take the notes, they don't take the mental notes, they don't, they don't hear the customer. And then when you don't hear the customer, that's when you run, down, run into issues down the road. So just those little exercises that you guys are doing right there is so big too, that, you know, it's, it's a game changer as well. And, you know, like with you, what you said, Ryan, as far as, you know, doing your passion and figuring that out, it is so important because like you said, like when I was growing up, I, I didn't think I was going to be in the construction industry. Like I didn't want to because I was do, sweep. When you're sweeping jobs, when you're doing that kind of hard labor, my dad, I, I told this story too. My dad made me, there was cement blocks in the front of a job site, you know, that they build the houses out of here. And he, he's like, see that pile of block? I want you to move it over there. It needs to be moved over there. So now being older and being involved with my brother in the business to the extent we are basically running the company and so on, those blocks don't have to be moved, you know? So it was almost just, and he would always tell me, yeah, move those blocks. You, you know, you're, you're growing, you got to get strong, this and that. It's just something I need them over there. They got to be in that pile over there. They never had to be moved. So, you know, it's, it's just things like that. And that's why I, I, I even did a video why I hated construction, um, you know, but I love it now. And it made me have appreciation for this business more than anything because I grew up in it. I know it. You're probably the same way. And, is, and you really, it makes you even more passionate about it, but actually doing it the right way too, because that's the way I was raised to do it. And and it just watching these houses take shape from the ground up and having your opinion in them and have it like you guys with design and everything that's that was you that was what you created yeah the customer was involved obviously too it was between you both and they created it as well but that was your project you know and then to see that the finished product too that just gives you that good feeling like wow, you know, we did that. We created that. What's, what can I do next? What can I even do better? You know? So that's the difference right there too. So, um, most people, most people ask about, you know, your, your past and, 
what you guys uh, did in the past and so on. But I like the, this question too, because I want to ask about your future, whether it's business or life, you know, where will we see Emily and Ryan in the future? Who will you guys be five, 10 years, 20 years from now, where are you going to be? I want to still be doing this. We, we love this and getting to work together on homes, but I really want to focus in on garage conversions for, for me personally. And I think that it is wasted space that can be made into profitable space. A lot of laws have recently changed here in California. And so with more and more people also needing to work from home and possibly in the future, people are going to be needing that extra home office space or needing that extra play space, possibly homeschooling. And then transforming those spaces and so I just see that as being very untapped right now in a lot of different ways and so especially in the cities and different areas where it's more heavily impacted and so I'd like to focus a little bit more on garage conversions. Yeah it's it's very unique and I would say that you know it's the same for me. I, Emily and I are both our story is our story, a big part of our story is our garage conversion. And if you have an HOA, a lot of, you know, neighborhoods, you cannot do a garage conversion. It's not legal. And, um, you know, but for, for a lot of homes, I'd say for at least half of homes in, in America, you, you can do a garage conversion. You already have the utilities already tied in. It's, it's typically attached to the main house and you can, probably do it for one third the cost is building a separate guest unit. So, um, you know, with everything going on right now in the economy, like um, Americans need to be more resilient and they need to not have as much overhead. And for us, like we've never had to pay a mortgage because we have a, a revenue generating um, garage conversion. And um, guess what? We build another garage, a separate garage. You know, it doesn't have, yeah. any, doesn't have any utility. We, we built another garage and we built a little uh, office in the back and we remodeled our basement to create more storage space. But um, if someone wants to do something, you know, that's cost effective, um, a garage conversion is definitely the way to go. And with more and more people working remotely, I think that it's going to be a new trend because people need not just a guest bedroom, um, you know, they need a, a larger space that will be their, their new office because commercial space, commercial um, properties and rentals, I think, are, is going to be a tough market in the future. And I think a lot of people want to create a, a really awesome business space at home and a garage conversion is a way to do it. So, yeah. No, I, I mean, I love the direction you guys are going with that. I think it's brilliant. Um, I mean, I just recently actually, right as you're like, uh, I was thinking of this, I read an article recently because of what this whole virus is going to cause people being at home more surrounded with their kids having to, you know, you're, you're basically in a whole different situation now to where, you know, I actually read that people are going to want to convert more spaces like you're talking about for, for and have more separation in the houses. You know, we were going through the transition or the, I shouldn't even say a phase, but it was for the last little while now of openness. Everybody wanted big open spaces and, you know, outdoors in and so on. And everything is kind of open. Then you have some rooms here and there. But now I think this article said after this transition, more people are going to want more separate spaces like offices and playrooms and so on, just like you guys said. So I think you're heading towards uh, a pretty, yeah, you're smart. <laughs> so good job. <laughs> good. It's not everyone, but right. it's a big part of our story. And I think a lot of people really benefit and, you know, could do the same thing. I mean, obviously there's, there's more income potential if we were focusing solely on a remodel or custom build for us, we have we have two here that we're mean to kind of, you know, we go on site and we're going the back and forth right now. And then we have other garage conversions. And so for us, we're like, yes, like we see them also saving money in that build. Like Ryan said earlier, they already have the plumbing in there. They have already the four walls. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to cost less than half 
than if they were going to just do a separate ADU. So it's another way where at the end of the day, yes, there's more detail, more craftsmanship that's needing to go into it, being creative with it being more functional, but we like that challenge a lot. And we work really, to, really well together with those challenges. So. Smart, yeah, very smart. And I guarantee you guys are going to have a lot of success with it. I have no doubt about it. And especially after listening to you guys and interviewing you with this. And yeah, I've loved having you guys on. This has been awesome. So my last question I like to ask everybody, what exactly do people need to look for when renovating a home or doing a garage conversion? And why should they choose Emily Ryan Homes as their go-to renovating company of choice? Well, I know for us, like you had said earlier, we truly are happiest in a construction zone. We see the project already done before it's even started. And so, and we try to carry that excitement throughout the entire project. We, you know, we give treats to our clients. We give treats to all of our subs. We got, you know, just the morale really high. And we just, if they're looking to remodel a space, first thing I check is the bones of a house. That's just what we go, go to first. If it has good bones, let's go for it. Uh, and just let's make, you know, your vision come to life. And we just really want to help you think through it, help to make it the most functional use of every square foot. Yeah, our attention to detail, the craftsmanship, you know, the, the over communication, that's, that's why people work with us. And, you know, and we're also trying to bring a, a modern kind of documentation side to the construction, you know, do time lapses of some of the work, you know, send videos to them, they can take those videos of the progress and send them to their friends, you know, and family. And, you know, it should be a fun experience. It shouldn't be a nightmare like we've seen for a lot of, um, a lot of others, you know, the building process being very difficult. It can be enjoyable and very fulfilling. So we, that's what we're trying to help do. Yeah. And it's, it's like you just said, it shouldn't be a nightmare. I mean, there's a lot of people that have just a bad taste in their mouths with builders and contractors and so on, because they've had such bad experiences. And unfortunately the good ones like ourselves, we have to deal with that and then get them over that and over that hump and learn to trust us again too. So, you know, I've had that, I've experienced that, especially where we're at because it's so seasonal down here, they're coming from all over the United States. So you know, they've dealt with builders up north and then, then they come down and deal with us and, you know, they're on their toes. So it's just a matter of us communicating well. And, and like you guys talked about, it's been awesome. And it's been, you guys did awesome. It's been great having you guys on. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, the first, first ever couple I've had on the show, which is awesome too. So yeah, I really appreciate it. You guys did great. Where last thing, where can people connect with you and find you guys? You can go to emilyryanholmes.com. We're on Instagram, Facebook. So you can DM us there and we're pretty easy to find. And everybody definitely needs to go check them out. And also you, everybody needs to go if you guys want some uh, tips and remodeling uh, advice, definitely go to your guys' website too. And what was that offer again? Just refresh the listener on your guys' offer that you're willing to do. And I'll put it in the show notes too. Yeah, we have a smart home improvement mini course, which is a free training for everyone to learn about and prepare for home renovation. And we also teach you about all the project pitfalls in that free training. And then we have our, our 12 step smart home improvement masterclass, which we're going to provide that for half off. We'll send a link. And that's just a, a to Z full training. We do a one-on-one -on -one call with you and then we'll help coach you through the whole entire process. So yeah, we're excited to help anyone who wants, um, wants someone to come alongside them in their home renovation. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll definitely share that too. Whenever you guys send me the link, I'll definitely put it on my social media too. So no, I really appreciate you guys coming on and taking the time today. This was awesome. Thank you so much. This was really fun. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. And guys, thank you as always for listening. Please feel free to share this. That's all I ask. I do this for free. I don't advertise or anything. So feel free to like, share, and write a review. That'd be awesome too. And I will see you guys on the next episode.